Well, let's start with two contrasting quotations. One from Lewis's novel, That Hideous Strength, part of his space trilogy, the last of his space trilogy, which he finished in 1945. And the second one from A Grief Observed, which I've already mentioned, his, um, his um, memorial to his wife after she died of cancer. Uh, in Hideous Strength, Lewis is talking to, uh, to Jane Studdock, who is, uh, is the, one of the major female characters. She's trying to finish a dissertation in, in English. She's married to a kind of a, a, weak, a, a weak-minded young man who is, is a sociologist and has gone to work for this awful place called the National Institute for Coordinated Experiments, NICE, which is anything but nice, you find, from Lewis's book. Um, and uh, uh, she's come to, to live in this Christian community called the Community of St. Anne's, directed significantly by a man named Ransom, who is something of a Christ figure, you can tell from the name, Ransom. Um, and uh, uh, he's trying to persuade her that she, she separated from her husband, and he really is a kind of a weak-minded uh, guy who's, who's more interested in his reputation and being part of the inner ring and so on. And uh, he's trying to, to, to tell her that this is, she's got to get back together with her husband. And here's how he puts it. Your trouble, he says to Jane, has been what the old poets called dangier. We call it pride. You are offended by the masculine itself, the loud, eruptive, possessive thing. The male you could have escaped, for it exists only on the biological level. But the masculine, none of us can escape. What is above and beyond all things is so masculine that we are all feminine in relation to it. Now, if this sounds like Plato, to those of you who have studied Plato, it is, right? He's saying that masculinity and femininity are, 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 are metaphysical forms behind the mere biology, which is maleness and femaleness. Jane says, you mean I shall have to become a Christian? It looks like it, says the director. Now, notice the move that Lewis is making here. He's basically saying this view of, this view of maleness and femaleness, this platonic view of, of, of maleness, femaleness, masculinity, femininity, is part of mere Christianity. And to, become, and, and, and to do this, Jane will have to become a Christian. Now, you can ask yourself whether or not this is more platonic than biblical. Plenty of people have criticized Lewis uh, for, for that point. But this is the move that he's making here. More interesting is what he writes um, in 1961, when he's mourning his wife's death. Uh, this is where the title of the book comes from that's in the bookstore. There is hidden or flaunted a sword between the sexes until an entire marriage reconciles them. It is arrogance in us, he means men there, to call frankness, fairness, and chivalry masculine when we see them in a woman. It is arrogance in them, women, to describe a man's sensitiveness or tact or tenderness as feminine. But also what poor, warped fragments of humanity most mere men and mere women must be to make the implications of that arrogance plausible, the implications of that stereotyping plausible. Marriage heals this. Lewis is not saying it doesn't get healed except through marriage, but he's saying marriage is one of the vehicles through this gets healed. Jointly, the two become fully masculine and feminine? No, the two become fully human. Then he quotes Genesis. In the image of God, he created them. Thus, by a paradox, this carnival of sexuality leads us out beyond our sexes. In fact, I to toyed with having the title of the book being Beyond Our Sexes. My publisher didn't think that was, was groovy enough, so they thought a sword between the sexes was much more inviting for some reason. All right. Okay. How can we use the term gender, and how did, did Lewis use it? Well, Lewis was, among other things, a linguist. He was an ancient languages scholar. Uh, he was a colleague of J.W.R. Tolkien, and even uh, studied ancient Isla uh, uh, Icelandic a little bit with J.W.R. Tolkien. So he definitely knew about, and he exploits the fact that in some languages, not English, gender is a linguistic marker. And so in French, we have le stylo, the pen. It's a le is the masculine uh, article. La chaise, for chair. Um, and Lewis exploits this by saying, well, you know, the things that are, are created as masculine, I mean, pens are, are, you know, point up, right? And chairs are something that engulfs you. Tee hee, right? Freud subtext. Okay. <laughs> Um, but on the other hand, Lewis knows, you know, Lewis knows that it's not that simple, that you sometimes get funny words with uh, feminine or, or, or masculine uh, markers on them. So, for example, in, in, in Latin, agricola is the word for farmer, but it's a feminine noun. Right? It's a word for a male farmer, but it's a feminine noun. All right, but Lewis, of course, does know about gender as a linguistic marker, and he does exploit that in his earlier writings in order to try and make the case for the metaphysical essence of gender that was talked about in the previous quote. Um, uh, he's also a medieval and Renaissance scholar uh, who is very enchanted by what he later called the discarded image. That's that enchanted view of the universe where everything is in this wonderful hierarchy going all the way up to God. 
right? the medieval great chain of being, it was called. Aristotle called it the ladder of nature. Um, and he calls it the discarded image because, of course, it was replaced uh, in, beginning in the, in the uh, 17th century by the scientific view, this sort of bloodless, dark, mechanical view of the universe where, where things are not interconnected uh, in the way they are in the, the discarded image. All right, um, and it's partly through his attachment to um, the discarded image of the medieval great chain of being uh, that, he, that he, he latches on to the idea of, of gender as a metaphysical essence because Aristotle believed that, all right? The medieval scholars, Milton, sorry, Milton definitely believed that and Lewis was a Milton scholar. Uh, but we also though find in his writings, especially his later writings, is that he begins to realize that gender is a social construct, right? As I say to my gender, psych of gender students, gender is as much a verb as it is a noun. It's something we do almost as much or more than something we have. Or gender is a rheostat, like a rheostat on a light that we turn up and down depending on the circumstances. A lot of evidence for that. Lewis begins to recognize and admit publicly, all right, he's admitted it in his letters before, all right, but publicly in his writings he starts to say, yes, it is true, gender is not something that's necessarily in all of its aspects a metaphysical given. It is something that is also socially constructed. It is something that is also conditioned by cultural, different, different types of cultures in different ways. What he doesn't go on to, uh, but what you, what you find a lot of people writing about uh, these days um, uh, who are doing theology of gender, uh, is the recognition that gender is both part of creation, right? We are created male and female, but it's also part of the cultural mandate, something we have to re view redemptive historically, right? So in other words, is gender something that's fixed at creation? And we find that, 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 uh, that the Bible writers are talking in exactly the same way about gender uh, in Genesis as they are, say, uh, in, in, in parts of the New Testament? Well, no, you know, we see some development there. And so we need to see where the trajectory of the redemptive historical story is going in order to, 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 to handle on what the Bible is saying, saying uh, as gender. You can't, just, you can't just rely on proof text. Well, Lewis doesn't do that. And you can't just rely on doctrine, right? You have to look at where things are going uh, in the redemptive historical uh, trajectory. <clears throat> 